Hey guys, so I wanted to share a technique I've come across for uh, creating custom templates for your anchor jig so that you can uh, reproduce moldings. And this is the task at hand. I've got this uh, old molding that I need to reproduce. Uh, it's a tongue and groove, uh, v-grooved beadboard, and I need to match the, the profile of that. And uh, this is what it looks like reproduced in new wood. And uh, instead of having to do very detailed setups for each one of these grooves uh, each time I want to run a board. Uh, I'm going to use my anchor jig to create a custom jig. And I'll show you how to do that real quick. As is the case in most anchor jig setups, one of the first things you need to do is get your bit centered on the fence. Here I've got an auxiliary fence and I've got my bit set up just absolute perfect so that it uh, splits right in half. And of course I tested that with uh, some sample cuts on a piece of stock. Make sure I'm not going too deep, leaving a little shoulder. Uh, this V-groove is supposed to create a perfect roundover if you use half of it, so that's exactly what we're doing here. Now as far as creating the custom jig, the main thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the stainless steel scale with some tape so that I can make my own custom marks on it. Because I already have the uh, fence set up exactly where I want it for the zero, I've just pulled the uh, stainless steel fence back further in the groove so I have access to it. I want to make sure it's down in its track all the way. And then we'll cover it with some tape. We've got tape covering up our stainless steel scale. I'm using blue painter's tape here, which is not ideal. If I had my druthers, I'd use some white tape, but I don't have that close at hand, so we'll make do with what we've got. So once I've got that pressed down nice and tight, I can take my razor blade and put it right there in between the scale and the track. All right. Hold it nice and tight into the groove. I'm just going to strike the dimension of that tape and then also cut it to a nice clean 90 down here at the end. Don't want to press too hard there because you're cutting across the magnet. You don't want to damage that. But the point here is to get a piece of tape that's fully supported by the uh, stainless steel rule. So it's not actually taped to the anchor jig, it's just taped to the stainless steel rule. Okay, so now that we've got the tape on, we can slide the rule back into where we'll be able to use it. Okay, so now the first thing I'm going to do is mark center. So I'm going to press down on the plexi. I'm going to hold my marker, in this case, at such an angle that I get a perfect scribe right up against the plexiglass window. Usually I would do this with a sharp pencil, but I want it to be able to show so you guys can see it. I'm going to be cutting my pieces in this order, so that the tongue is riding up against the fence, and then one, two, three, four, five grooves. Uh, and I want to remember my orientation, so I'm going to draw the tongue facing this way, just so I can't possibly forget which way I'm supposed to be going with these things. All right, so here we are at our first setup. I've got the bit centered right in the groove that I need to make. And I'll do the same thing I did before for the zero mark. Come up here to the plexi, hold it down nice and tight to the tape, and strike a mark. Okay, and then we can do the same for the next. And we'll just keep doing that across the uh, width of the profile. And now here we are with our four or five marks where we'll make passes over the router bit. So first I return to the zero mark, where the zero marks here at the plexi, lock my gate in, confirm that this is, in fact, centered on the blade. And now I'm going to grab the scale again. I'm going to move my zero mark under the hairline. Because I do not like having to try to remember to line up to this side. I'd rather be on the hairline each time. So that's the secret to the customized templates. Make your marks using this as a guide, and then slide the whole thing so you can use your hairline. Now I'm set up and ready to go. I'll be able to zip to each one of these locations and run my stock and have perfect reduplication each time. And here's our reproduced stock after a couple of quick passes and uh, a touch up with the same thing sponge. So that's it. That's how I make uh, custom templates to reproduce cuts. Uh, so custom templates. Uh, one thing I would recommend is you do not want to leave the tape on too long or else your sliding scale will eventually get sticky and uh, it's better to get those off. Anyhow, hope it helps some.